Welcome to Strictly Marketing Talk Radio, the showcase for high-quality guests who provide high-quality marketing information. Here's your host, Carrie Heaps. We are so excited to have you. It's been long overdue, and um, definitely love sharing the platform with you um, on your end as well, just with the educational segments we've done, and, and just even being on your show and being able to share uh, content and different things that we have going on. So we're happy to have you on our show today. And this is an exciting topic, Alicia, mm-hmm. the mindset. And it's really, it's been I think it's so timely because even the past few uh, podcast interviews that I have been a guest on, um, fear and attitude have been Mm -hmm. in the air a lot and just really uh, just such a timely, timely uh, subject topic. So I'm excited to get your viewpoint on that. I know I told the listeners a little bit about Mm -hmm. you and about your background, but if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing a little bit more with everyone, let people know how you got started with your business. Okay, certainly, I sure will, and thank you again uh, for the opportunity. So I'll set the stage today by just sharing uh, with the listeners a little bit about my background that actually started in uh, 2007 after having my daughter, and I returned off of my maternity leave and went back to work uh, just for a few months with a company where I served as a high-level senior sales uh, manager. And I was planning to uh, relocate from Huntsville, Alabama at the time to do sort of a lateral move uh, with my job and to move to Phoenix, Arizona, and then serve in that same position. And I had all of my plans in place. You know how we make our plans, Carrie. (laughs) Had all the plans (laughs) in place. And, And then once I left, things began to shift, and I was guided to start preparing for the life strategist or life coaching uh, industry. And so I started building my first small coaching and consulting practice in 2008, and it was called The Bridge Connection. And uh, as I was preparing, I decided to fully launch that in uh, 2009. And that particular uh, business platform had a core focus um, for a niche for leadership transition for women and also spiritual entrepreneur development. And so my primary mission at that time was to help women uh, in leadership roles connect to their true value and also their next levels of self through personal and inner game mastery while also helping them to develop and advance their businesses. So once I got that practice up and going, I also started developing an additional business that was called Mini M-I-N-I Ways to Abundance. And it was considered to be sort of a twin service of the Bridge Connection, but it had a primary focus at that time for connecting uh, emerging abundant leaders uh, with their true inner abundance through inner game mastery. And now, actually, that service has now been sort of rebranded, and it's now a publishing platform uh, that's training emerging abundant entrepreneurs. <laughs> Uh, Also, at the time, uh, Carrie, I had uh, media programs that supported both the Bridge Connection and uh, Many Ways to Abundance, and so I was utilizing also my background of media communications and journalism. And what I discovered early on as it related to sales and marketing uh, in this industry, it was a lot different (laughs) than the traditional selling and, you know, the high-level marketing that I was used to doing for other companies or leadership endeavors as well as in ministry as well. So I was excellent, Carrie, at selling another's brand or vision. However, (laughs) when it came to having to sell my own brand consistently, uh, it was a totally different story. (laughs) So I had to start up-leveling my marketing knowledge and to truly learn the ins and outs of what it would take to be effective for online and offline marketing to thrive and sustain in this type of industry. So this began for me, another evolutionary process that led me a few years later to start actually launching an annex marketing platform in addition to my twin services, had I called it at the time. And so I started teaching others what I had learned and also how to start making sort of the transition from the traditional job market form of marketing to now begin connecting with their marketing factor for being either a solo or conscious entrepreneur. 
And so as time progressed in, in doing all of these things, by the year 2011, I had experienced several ups and downs in the coaching arena. And like most business owners do, within the first three to five years, uh, I even experienced burnout, and I started creating a series of health crises um, from that burnout. So I had to slow down and finally reconnect to my true purpose for being an entrepreneur and what that was going to look like, you know, at that phase of the journey for me. And to be honest, I started feeling guided that I needed to start really taking my gift of writing to the next level and start becoming published. So I took a step and uh, became published and published my first book, and then I went on to start teaching others how to do the same, and I helped several of my clients and others launch their entrepreneurship careers. And during that time, I was also being guided to start sort of phasing out of my traditional coaching practice to become a pioneer of a different type of entrepreneurship that would bring sort of a holistic approach of using pretty much all the areas of my personal, professional, educational, and spiritual journey. So I started operating, Carrie, in what I was calling at that time conscious multiplicity as an entrepreneur, which, of course, <laughs> was not understood in the arena that has a paradigm of being focused uh, primarily on one niche. So from late 2012 to early 2014, I came off the traditional entrepreneurial grid and began changing the rules for how I was going to show up and set a new industry standard. And so I was in my business cocoon, if you will, developing the next phases of who I was and how I was going to show up as a pioneer entrepreneur who could use all of my lifestyle and build several business platforms to facilitate this new leadership and um, entrepreneurial expression of what I call the total me empires so that I could serve several niches with a common focus of uh, transformation as a transformational uh, cross trainer for leaders. So I went through a lot of business rebranding and renovation and I ended up closing out or sort of phasing out the bridge connection and then I also gave pause on uh, many ways to abundance. And then my company, uh, Alicia Waters Cross Industries International, uh, was birthed in 2013, which uh, it is a cross-niche media communications and a cross-brand marketing training hub for helping entrepreneurs learn how to serve in diverse industries. And so to support that effort, Carrie, I began to also relaunch my journalism career and up-leveling my media brand in a way that would be a gateway into different industries through uh, publishing intentional journal-style trainers uh, to cross-train and also to add value to uh, different industries, which this began to open up doors, you know, speaking opportunities and training opportunities and also uh, high-level writing opportunities for multiple niches. And as you mentioned uh, earlier in the introduction, I published over a 90 journal-style handbooks and workbook trainers and also many books. And I use those as business marketing evangelism tools for what I call uh, sort of an entry with ease into other industries. And then also I have two other businesses. They're not cross-industries uh, cross uh, related. They're more niche-oriented, but they still allow me to fully show up using all of who I am, you know, in those areas. But what I want to say also as we begin to focus on the topic for today is that these experiences have up-leveled me to learn how to market uh, to various uh, arenas, and of course, they've developed my marketing mindset through inner game for practically um, any and everything, so I'm definitely ready to uh, tackle this topic for today. <laughs> Definitely, and thank you so much for sharing with everyone, and myself included, because I've never really had a chance to hear your whole story, so to speak, of, of kind of how you got to where you are today. I mean, I've read about it, but mm -hmm. not to hear you to hear you talk about it. So I'm glad that you shared that with everyone. And one common theme, though, the reason I always ask that of all of my guests, mm -hmm. Alicia, is because it's I always find with being an entrepreneur, it's never a straight line. Like you said, right. we could make our plans and mm -hmm. we think that we're we're going on one direction and then something will happen that puts us on a different path. And it turns out to be for the best, whether Absolutely. it's a positive or negative experience. Mm -hmm 
experience. So thank you for sharing that. And I just want to share with everyone as well, because Alicia has written so much. She is a fabulous writer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> One of the books that I really liked, which you co-authored um, with two other people, um, mm-hmm. You May Be Excused, which has a, a second edition out, uh, or yeah. the next edition, the next part mm-hmm. of the series out. But fabulous book, uh, definitely a great book for anybody in in uh, in business for themselves. You should definitely pick it up. It's a quick read, but some great content in there. Um, yeah, I want to talk about – marketing mindset you know Mm -hmm. what is your take on marketing mindset because I know you've got an opinion about this and I want everybody (laughs) to hear it (laughs) well Carrie there are several different levels of of how we approach mindset especially you know from an entrepreneurial vantage point Um, however for today I'm going to sort of focus in on on a core uh, piece for this see I believe that you know having the right marketing mindset is really vital to one's overall success as an entrepreneur, and this is non-negotiable, and I'm, I'm sure you can agree with this. And since marketing is the very vehicle that we use to communicate and to, you know, connect with our target market, then we must have the mentality and the perception about marketing. I mean, the mindset is the very foundation and the chief cornerstone to excelling at anything, and especially uh, as it relates to business. So, as marketers, we have to have the proper, proper, excuse me, mental cultivation, okay, and the up levels at every phase of our entrepreneurial journey, because I believe that the mindset is sort of the calibrator and it sets the tone for your business, and that's something you know we're going to be focusing on today is really about how mindset and attitude sets the tone for your business, because see, you are your empire. And your mindset, just like we learn in psychology, the subconscious mind is considered to be the seat of the soul, right? So having Mm -hmm. the right mindset (laughs) as it relates to business and marketing is also considered the seat of the soul of who you are as an entrepreneur. So our mindset is what sets the pitch or sets the tone for our business. And this is no different than if you liken it to an orchestra. All right? So if your marketing mindset is off, then your whole entire business framework won't succeed long term. And, Carrie, reason being, if you have everything in place and you're ready to go and you're ready to play full out in the business arena, yet you don't feel confident or competent in your marketing, then guess what? (laughs) You won't start off on the right note, and the tone of your business endeavors will be off. So your marketing mindset has got to sort of be uh, melodic. It has to be aligned. It truly has to be in sync in order for you to be most effective. So your marketing mindset, as I mentioned earlier, sort of like an orchestra. It must be harmonious in nature. (laughs) There's just no getting uh, getting around that. So if you want to be able to be most effective and to accomplish your highest mission, you have to have the right mindset. Otherwise, you will be playing off-key, and those who actually know what the rhythm is of business, because, Carrie, you know, you can tell when someone is sort of off in in what they're doing, even when they put their best efforts forward. Those who are familiar with how things work in the entrepreneurial uh, arena, they will know it. Also, your target audience will know it, (laughs) and you can lose opportunities uh, for them to really know, like, and trust you, you know, in a way that they really could if you were fully showing up in a higher mindset. So as Mm -hmm. it relates to, I'm sorry, Carrie, did you want to say something? I was just going to interject there really quick Mm -hmm. because it's spot on what you're talking about. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you talk about when people, you know, that they can, they can pick up on that. And and Mm -hmm. I know people don't like this comparison, but I don't know any other way to paint a clearer picture, Mm -hmm. but people are like dogs. They can smell Mm -hmm. fear. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. if you're panicked, if you're, um, upset about something or if your day is off per se or you mm-hmm. you have a really negative attitude, yeah. no matter what you try to do to cover that up, it's going to come through. Exactly. And people mm-hmm. pick up on it. They really do. They pick up on that vibration and mm-hmm. your, you know, your attitude, it can just, it can make or break you in business. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. Oh, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm so glad that you so glad that you said that. Yeah, this is a topic I could go on really for days about because <laughs> it's, it's so layered. But I also want to say that 
you know, as it relates to entrepreneurs really trying to fully show up. They can have the right products and services, but if they're having even limiting beliefs about, you know, who they are and what they offer, then this goes back to the mindset, and it will potentially uh, sabotage them in the long run. And so we are the conductors, Carrie, of our mindset, and it's really up to us to really set the tone and and sort of align the rhythm of really our mental uh, reservoir. It's really up to us to take that authority so that we can serve at the highest level, serve ourselves and the ones that we are called to serve so that we can operate fully from a place of authenticity and not only that, what's for the highest and best good to reach our target market. But going back to the monolic tones of what we set uh, in entrepreneurship, you must be able to project the right sound quality to uh, your market. So this starts with being willing to do the mental work and really stay on top of your mental marketing environment, all right, because you have to constantly prepare your mindset. It's just like I would liken this to preparing for the Olympics because you truly want to go for the goal in whatever it is that you do. So you want to prepare at the highest level. And one of the things that I would uh, recommend off the top as it relates to mindset and truly setting the tone uh, for your business is you've got to start creating a new marketing mindset plan. A lot of times people have their social media plans and their business plans in order, but do you have a mindset plan uh, to, to help you stay, you know, on the incline of inner game mastery as it re- relates to marketing? If you have limiting beliefs, it's time to start really creating a new story for the next phase of your marketing, all right? You've got to conduct your mindset to speak and project what is for your highest in marketing good, which is your marketing truth. Some of the ways, Carrie, that people can begin to really set up this type of framework for themselves is, as we know, enrolling accountability. Don't leave this to yourself. (laughs) Enroll accountability for yourself so that you can really stay um, above the incline of really mastering your, your marketing game because you have to be able to have that mindset in order to play full out as it relates to marketing. So also listening to maybe audios and and videos or reading materials that are going to, you know, help you up-level your marketing mindset are going to be most helpful. And then, of course, spending time with people who have a great marketing mindset. The company that you keep is extremely important uh, to how your mental capacity plays out in the marketplace. And, you know, one thing that we've been talking about with the attitude, because obviously, you know, I was going to ask you how important you think attitude is as it relates to marketing, because if I had to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd put it as an 11. (laughs) (laughs) I I agree. No, No, I agree. Attitude, Carrie, attitude is everything, and it shows up in everything that we do. So if you don't have the right attitude, just like going back to mindset, if you don't have the right attitude, and especially as it relates to marketing, you're not going to get very far in business. So let's say if you have a negative attitude, people will notice it. Just like you mentioned earlier, the the vibrations that we give out, the signals, people can pick up on it, and you will stand out just like a person, and excuse me for saying this, a person who's not bathed for maybe months, all right, or hasn't brushed their teeth for two weeks. It it really is, is that serious. So you begin to sort of reek a vibration that people are not going to be interested in. And even if you don't have a bad attitude, you could have a misaligned attitude that's really not serving, uh, you know, your highest and best good. And in return, you're going to get scattered results. So, again, if you're going to set the tone for your business with the right energy, and, again, as we're talking today about it relates to your mindset and having the right attitude, so you don't want your prospect saying, oh, they're setting the tone for their business, but I don't like the way that smells. They'll opt to offer <laughs> right. a bar of tone soap <laughs> instead of their business because they really don't appreciate, you know, the way that you're coming off. So, you know, despite um, whatever efforts you're putting out there, if your attitude is not the best, then it's going to show up in everything um, that you do. And, the and Alicia, result- go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask, do you mind for the listening audience purposes, just kind 
of share an example of like maybe somebody that you've dealt with in the past or, or a story <laughs> that you've heard that kind of fits into this tone? Because I think when sometimes when people mm-hmm. think about, you know, oh, I, you know, my attitude, it, it's I have a good attitude, I'm just having a bad day, and then not realizing how that's coming across. Do you have an example yeah. you can kind of just share with everybody? Sure. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And um, instead of just isolating the situation, I'll actually talk about two different um two different stories uh, that are are related. So I've had colleagues, uh, so to speak, and one who uh, also had become a client that would always speak very uh, negative about uh, their business and their their marketing. And what I realized, Carrie, is that they were also doing this in their lifestyle, okay? So they were talking down about um, how their day would go, what's going on in their world, and it was translating into uh, their business, and then also they despise their marketing. So having a bad attitude, first off, of anything that's dealing with your entrepreneurial uh, journey is not going to get you anywhere. So when they weren't getting the results that they wanted, they were complaining, but yet they never made the direct correlation to how language and, and vibration and all of that, you know, plays a part. So... The expectation is that if you are sending out negative um, information or giving false information to the universe about what you want for your business, but then on another note, uh, you're you're talking down about it, you're sending out two different signals, which means that even your target audience is going to be confused about who it is and and what you're showing up uh, to present to them. This all goes back to attitude. So if you find yourself talking not just about your business, but just about your your life um, as a whole, when you have a bad attitude and you're speaking negative, that's producing the results <laughs> that you're getting. So it's really time to sort of shift the way that you think, your your perception. And even as it relates to your marketing, several, several of us don't like all the components that we do in marketing. We know that they have to be done. Is that correct, Carrie? That's correct. Yeah. But – we have to change sort of how we think about it. Uh, and if there's something that we're not as strong in in our, our marketing, then we can begin to sort of delegate that. So this is what I recommend to my client and also my colleague, is instead of focusing so much on what's not working for you, why don't you find where your strengths are and play to those to the point where your weaknesses, so to speak, become irrelevant by bringing someone else in to facilitate that for you. That way that frees you up from the energy of continuing to think negative about uh, whatever social media platform you're using, um, you know, your, your email list, uh, whatever the marketing dynamics are uh, or platforms that you're using. When you change how you look at things, things change. And as Jim Rohn would say, that things get better by change and not by chance. So this is why it's important to examine uh, the attitude as it relates to marketing and, as I mentioned earlier, discover how you can shift your perspective about the things that you dislike um, or the things that you don't even feel competent enough in. And go back to delegating. I'm a huge fan of that (laughs) because it's going to help you to feel less stressful and also uh, resentful. And that's a whole other topic of resenting your marketing um, it is, and definitely I see a lot of people uh, yeah. that, that harbor that resentment, whether mm-hmm. it's over a plan or, mm-hmm. or you know, again, going back to what you were talking about, you know, you, you have, you're saying one thing and then you're mm-hmm. wanting another, and it's so conflicting, and it can be conflicting uh, within both mm-hmm. uh, your results and so forth. So um, we're going to take a quick break, but, I, you know, when we do come back, a couple of the things that I want to talk about that you had focused a little bit more on, and I appreciate you sharing that example with us um, mm-hmm. about, you know, just to give people an idea of what we're talking about, just a small example, because there's a variety of different examples out there, oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely want to talk about um, – you know, some of the mistakes that you see people make when it comes to their marketing efforts as it relates to their mindset, because I think it's negativity and I think fear plays plays into that. So that's, yeah, definitely something that we're going to talk about. We're going to take a quick break. If you do have a a question for Alicia or for myself, you're welcome to call the show at 888. Go for it. And we'll be back just after these messages. Let's face it. 
gets it. No one likes to be on the phone. However, it's the most crucial part of any sales-related position. But we here at Knockout Marketing enjoy being on the phone and getting to speak with various businesses all over the country. Technology has allowed us to acquire talent from other areas that feel the same way about being on the phone as we do all to help your business succeed in the process. We have a combined experience of 15 years of successful telemarketing in the business-to-business arena. Our agents are articulate, business-minded, and have worked in various industries. We are standing by to help you with your needs. To see if our service is right for you, visit appointment setting by knockoutmarketing.com for a free consultation or call us toll free at 844-222-9740. You've discovered talkzone.com, the best in internet talk radio. talkzone.com. You're listening to Strictly Marketing Talk Radio with your host, Gary Heaps. And welcome back to Strictly Marketing Talk Radio. I'm your host, Carrie Heaps, and we are talking today with Alicia Nicole Waters about marketing mindset. And Alicia, just before the break, um, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the mistakes and, and things that you see people make in their marketing efforts. I want to go back to the marketing mindset for a minute. Mm-hmm. What are a couple of mistakes that you see entrepreneurs making when it comes to their marketing efforts because of their mindset? It's off. Oh, okay, totally, yes. Well, one of the things, there's several ways we can go with this, but I will start off by saying that normally I see sort of an unclear focus, and and I too have had this uh, in the past as it relates to, to marketing, and that certainly can affect your mindset. So when there's an unclear marketing focus and there's no real chief aim as it relates to defining clear and concise marketing goals, your marketing agenda will tend to be cluttered and it lacks the simplicity that it needs in order for you to move forward. So this certainly can mess with your mindset because there is confusion. You don't sometimes know if you're coming or you're going because you're unclear about your message. And when you're unclear about your message, then certainly those whom you're trying to impact, they're not going to be clear about what it is that you offer and who it is that you represent. Uh, Another thing I see, Carrie, is when there's sort of this systematic approach where marketers are on autopilot and there's no real uh, conscious effort, you know, even as it relates to social media. There's a lot of posting randomly, just continuing to do things, and even when they don't see that they're getting the results, they don't actually uh, step in to make the proper shifts in order to up-level that or tweak some things. They just continue. Uh, another thing that I see, Carrie, is following cookie-cutter systems, and you and I have definitely had our share of conversations on this. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. And also uh, a lack of consistency uh, as it relates to marketing. Sometimes someone will start up uh, a, a marketing campaign and they won't follow through. They won't execute um, effectively to bring it into completion. And then another area I'm going to say, and Carrie, you and I have definitely had our Uh, times of discussion on this and even a few segments is when entrepreneurs and marketers are chasing what I call the guru wizard of Oz and never truly tapping into their own uh, unique factor uh, as it relates to marketing. So that's, you know, that's a huge mistake when you're not able to know what your true authentic expression is uh, as it relates to marketing. Um, another thing I mentioned earlier was about not knowing how to make the proper shifts in the business and the marketing dynamics so that entrepreneurs can achieve their present and next levels of success. So when this happens, they don't properly prepare what I call the marketing climate uh, for every phase because they're often distracted with chasing all of the shiny objects or what some call the shiny object syndrome. And when these efforts carry begin to yield less than what they expect, then they feel like a failure, which then leads to even more mindset work around marketing that sometimes really isn't unnecessary. It's really not necessary because it's been created simply because they haven't slowed down to figure out where do they make the shift, where do they need to tweak and not continue, you know, to beat the drum of, of the same routine. Um, there's there's several things I can go on about this. I also can talk about, um, you know, there's just a lack of mastery 
as it relates to mastering maybe only one or two things that they do well. And then as one of your guests I heard a couple of weeks back talked about going deep with the process, finding uh, one or two key areas and then going deep. Uh, if I had to use an example from my own personal experience, I love to use the speak uh, to market path. And for me, that's primarily a focus on uh, marketing through my radio program or using radio mastery and speaking in addition to using my publications as business marketing uh, evangelism. So I do that and use those forms so that I can focus on just one or two key aspects that I can go deep with and be consistent with and become masters of those areas. And I love that you shared those those couple of things because all of those are really, really, really good. And I just want to touch on each one. You mm -hmm. know, definitely unclear focus, mm -hmm. not knowing what your message is. Or what I find a lot of people like to do is they're not giving – it feeds into the other thing that you put in there, um, you know, not being consistent, that they're mm -hmm. consistently – but they are consistently changing their message. You know, they feel <laughs> right. like it's not working, mm -hmm. or they're just not giving it enough time. And I've been guilty of that myself, Me too. not giving oh, – absolutely a certain uh, marketing campaign enough time mm -hmm. to really come to fruition. When you when we talk about timelines, too, what do you typically recommend for people before they start saying, hey, this probably is not working for me? Do you think six months? Do you think a year? Like, what's your feedback on time? Well, honestly, I, I really believe in giving a shot at, at certain processes for at least 90 days. I think monitoring them even in 30 a day increments, if you can do it for at least 90 days and start to sort of amp up and get a few results from that, then I think you can continue uh, to sort of evolve it to stretch a little bit beyond. But if it's going beyond sort of the six-month period, uh, I would definitely say let's return <laughs> to um, focus on the chief aim of what it is that you're really trying to uh, accomplish. In my transformational uh, marketing segment, I normally talk about creating a, a rapid rollout result and, and what that looks like and being able to ask yourself in the present moment, you know, what are the rapid results? Because sometimes, Carrie, we know your business needs some rapid results. <laughs> it can't wait six months, right? Right, um, right. Yeah, so you have to ask yourself, you know, what are the rapid rollout results that you need right now? What, how can you transform uh, your marketing agenda in the present? How can you become uh, a transformational marketing alchemist. As we know, alchemists, they transform lead into gold. So sometimes when processes aren't working and you really need something that's going to accelerate your success, then you have to say, well, I need a rapid rollout result right now uh, in order to catapult myself, you know, to the next level. And when you do this, this is producing um, a sense of consciousness into the marketing, which is really important because, as I mentioned before, Carrie, there's a lot of autopilot marketing and just no real conscious effort. That's why people aren't awake to see this isn't working, and they know it's not working, but they'll continue to keep going down that path. So going back to the question as it relates to the timeline, maybe tweaking what you do and, and trying it for at least 90 days, be at least consistent with it for 90 days, and then revisit it. If it's working for you some and you can amp it up and take it to the next level, then I would say, Carrie, you could give it maybe the six months. Uh, anything after that, I, I would say we need to do something different. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad that you, you uh, gave us your feedback on that because I think that that's so important to kind of give people an idea of timelines of mm -hmm. what people are talking about. Uh, because I hear so many people talk about timelines, but yet they don't give examples of mm -hmm. what's a decent timeline. So I'm glad that you shared that. You know, another thing that you talked about with, like, autopilot and the cookie cutter programs, which mm -hmm. we've had tons of discussions about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that I find, too, Alicia, and maybe you can give some feedback on this, is that especially with your marketing that is not something that, you know, everybody says, oh, I just want, you know, you see all these programs out there that mm -hmm. people will talk about, oh, you know, buy into my system and it mm -hmm. generates all these leads and you don't actually have to do anything. You don't have to participate in your own success. And I could not disagree with that statement any more than I could, you know, disagree with right. anything else. I mean, it's, but it blows my mind how many mm -hmm. people actually think 
that that's an okay thing. And the reality is, and you know, last week's guest, uh, Kelly Robbins, yes, she Kelly. was able mm-hmm. to generate leads. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she shared a story about how she generated over 175 qualified leads, mm-hmm. but yet she still had to participate in that. Those leads need to right. be called. They need to be nurtured. Mm-hmm. They need, you know, are they a good fit? Do they need to go somewhere else? What is your feedback on, you know, participating in the marketing? Oh, well, you must. It's, it's an absolute must. Uh, that's another area that's non-negotiable, and that's another mindset shift that has to be altered, if you will, if someone has uh, that type of marketing mentality. If you believe that you can just set up your systems and they can just go for you and you don't have to actually uh, participate in your success as a marketer, Uh, In the conscious entrepreneur arena or solo entrepreneur arena, you are not going to make it. You have to be participant in your success. And, uh, Carrie, as you and I were talking on one of our radio webinars recently, is uh, as it relates to speaking and marketing, that it's not enough for people to hire even PR firms uh, or even have promotional ambassador teams uh, to promote for them. As a marketer, as an entrepreneur or a speaker or a leader, you have to participate in your success, and you mm-hmm. have to be sort of the, the living, walking um, brand because that's, that's who you are. Every time you speak, you're marketing. When you're out in, in the marketplace or wherever you are, you are marketing every time you communicate. You have to be participating in your success. If you are waiting for someone else to do it for you, well, good luck. And when you don't get the results that you want, don't cry about it because you have not put in the the time and the effort. It goes back to what I was saying earlier, is that if you're going to be effective uh, in this new era of change and entrepreneurship, you have got to prepare yourself like you are in the Olympics. Not like you're on the high school um, tryout team or or t-ball. You have to prepare yourself like you are in the Olympics and go for the goal, which means No one can do for you what only you can do to get the results. If you hire a coach or a personal trainer, let's take uh, for fitness or or health, a personal trainer or a consultant can help you map out a plan, but yet they cannot make you eat correctly. They're not going to do the sit-ups and the crunches for you. And they're not coming over to your house at 2 o'clock in the morning to pry out the ice cream out of your hands. Exactly. (laughs) Right. And so this all relates to mindset because, again, if you have the mindset or you have the attitude that uh, or the um, wannabe diva complex in entrepreneurship, um, you're not going to last very long. Uh, And there are too many businesses that are opening and closing, and they're closing and shutting down when they actually don't have to. And I like, um, it was a memes, I believe, that you posted the other day. I'm going to paraphrase it. I don't remember exactly everything that it said. But basically, you were saying you're either going to work up or rust out or <laughs> something to that. You, yeah, you either, I think it was you either work your way out or, your or way rust up. yourself out. Yeah, exactly. Rust work down. your way up or rust yourself out. Right. So in being lazy, so to speak, and I am going to use that term. So if you're going to be lazy in your entrepreneurship and as it relates to marketing, if you have that mindset, then I would say to you, go and find something different to do um, because it's not going to work in this arena. And this is an arena that's going to challenge you. It's going to uh, evolve you to be the absolute best of who you are so that you can show up effectively to serve others. There are multitudes of people out here who really need what entrepreneurs have to offer, but if those same entrepreneurs who are being called to serve at the highest level are not willing to do what it takes to transform their mind and and set the tone for their business, then, yeah, they need to go and do something different because this is a totally different game of of changing lives and and it needs to really be taken serious. Um, And starting with the mindset and the attitudes that we have are going to help produce the results and the change and transformation not only for ourselves but for the world at large, too. Carrie, you get me on the soapbox here. 
I know, I know. You get going and it's like you, you're sharing such great, great, great information. And that's like I said, this was such an important topic to mm-hmm. share and talk about. And you brought up about the, you know, the positive uh, little quotes and things like that. And we've been making a habit of mm-hmm. posting those where they go out every morning. And I do that for two reasons. Number one, mm-hmm. because I want people to read it and yeah. set the tone for their day. Mm-hmm. But also, too, it actually has a lot to do with marketing because, again, for those people who are in sales who follow us, that, you know, or follow the magazine that they're in Mm -hmm. sales or, you know, they're entrepreneurs and you have to wear that sales and marketing cap, whether you want to do it or not, it sets the tone for the whole day. So Mm -hmm. I I hope that, and and those messages, that's one of the things that seems to get shared the most out Mm -hmm. of everything, uh, which I think is is great. So we continue to do that. Um, So I'm glad that you brought that up. This kind of feeds into my next question for Mm -hmm. you, Alicia, is we've talked about, which I'm not crazy about the term, I've never Mm -hmm. liked it, but being authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas Mm -hmm. I would like to say, (laughs) just keep it real, just Mm -hmm. be yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, so if you can share some feedback on that, just as it relates to your marketing mindset, because, you know, some people, like I'll use myself as an example, I'm, for the most part, I'm a very outgoing person. I Mm -hmm. am positive in nature, but I'm not one of those people that's going to sugarcoat things for people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that does come out in our marketing because if you are looking for somebody to hold your hand and tell you everything's going to be great and sing to you and tuck you in at night, I'm not your girl. Uh, you need Same to find here. someone else to work <laughs> exactly. with. Exactly. I'm, I'm more or less, I'm the person that's going to kick you in the butt and say, get to work. Um, so talking about yeah. being authentic, I, you know, I did that and it hurt mm-hmm. my marketing efforts because I actually had someone tell me, you're being too rough around the edges. You need to be more, as they put it, feminine. <laughs> no, <laughs> or you be have more, to be yourself. You, you be have to be yeah. You do. Well, the, what I was going to say was I did change my marketing efforts for a year. I attracted mm-hmm horrific clients, you know, people that I mm-hmm. should not have attracted, right. and it really backfired. So, mm-hmm. you know, talk a little bit about being authentic with your marketing efforts and, and, and your marketing mindset and how that should all play out. Okay, certainly. And and I will preface that <laughs> before I go there. Uh, as you mentioned about you were kind of rough around the edges, and, and sometimes, you know, there are people who need someone to sort of boot them out of their comfort zone. Um, and when you're working with a trainer, or a specific coach, they're designed to help get you out of your comfort zone and it's not supposed to uh, feel warm and fuzzy to you because it is more like a, a workout. If you want to get toned, you want to get buffed, and you're going to have to do some things and you're going to have to cross-train. I have a saying, and I say it in love. I'm going to say this and suggest this. Um, you may not like it. It could hurt your feelings just a little bit, but you'll be all right after the swelling goes down. <laughs> So, uh, (laughs) and that may sound harsh, but at the same time, it is helping people to really get out of their comfort zone and to do the things that they need to do. So as it relates to being authentic, so authentic or authenticity rather is one of those uh, common words that's used very loosely in the business arena, Carrie, and I know, uh, you know, we've had conversations about this. And um, unfortunately, most don't truly understand what it means to be authentic and to keep it real. Do you agree, Carrie? Oh, I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. And I think it's, you know, there's been so many people that have really built out a niche market Mm -hmm. just on that term alone. And, Mm -hmm. you know, again, I don't like the term. I always compare it to because when I first heard the word authentic is years ago for the people who can remember this, you know, ragu, the spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you remember that commercial, um, 26 authentic herbs and spices Mm -hmm. go into every jar. Well, Mm -hmm. that's when I think of authentic, I want to either, you know, hand them a coupon so they can buy a jar of ragu at 30, you know, 30 cents off or I, I just, it drives me crazy because most of the people who talk about it have turned it into something completely different. Completely different. No, I agree. And here's the deal. See, if you don't know who you are and you haven't effectively embodied, I would like to say self-mastery on a certain level, then you can't possibly know how to show up authentically or keep it real because you haven't become real with yourself. So being authentic in your business and in your marketing has to start long before you set up a plan or you, you try to execute strategies. As I mentioned earlier, if you are not authentically um, being who you are in your everyday life in general, then you will not succeed at being authentic in your business because it all ties together. 
And, you know, I hear several teach on this subject, and uh, Carrie, again, we have multiple conversations about this, several that teach on this topic about being your true authentic self. But then they will turn right around and provide you with a cookie-cutter model that tells you to do exactly what they did to get the results instead of teaching you how to access your own unique factor. And sure, can we take concepts from people and model it in our own authenticity? We can. However, it's still going to go back to first knowing your true authentic self, you know, as a person and as a professional. And as it relates to mindset, you have to embody the mindset that you need to show up in your own authenticity, but you have to be real. Sure, can you tweak certain things about your personality so that you can uh, be attractive to your audience? Absolutely. But you want to be careful that you don't become something that you're not. So I have mm -hmm. a lot of different dynamics to my personality, which can be very warm, very kind, very sweet. When I get into a certain level of trainer mode, depending where the dynamics are going, then I have often had to get over my own personal uh, people strongholds and say, well, this is not a time that I'm choosing to be liked if I really want to help someone get their transformation. In, in the process, they may not really appreciate it, but in the long term, they will, and they will thank me, and it never fails. So even as you related to changing who you were of being sort of a little rough around the edges and someone said to, you know, in integrate or incorporate more of your, your feminine approach. Um, but if you were doing that in a way that was not going to be aligned and congruent with who you are, then look at the results. You, you ended up attracting uh, clients that were then going to actually sort of run the show for you and you would have to keep shifting them. Then if you stood in your authentic place of power of, of who you are organically at the core, how you're oriented, then different results, and I've had, you know, the, the same uh, happen for me. But I would also like to sort of offer on that note, Carrie, uh, a powerful question that uh, your listeners can ask themselves. So as it relates to marketing and, and the mindset and, and lifestyle in general uh, pertaining to authenticity, they can ask themselves, what areas in my marketing or lifestyle need to be authenticated more? I mean, that's a powerful question. When you don't know, am I showing up authentic? Um, am I truly being myself or keeping it real? What are the areas in your marketing or in your lifestyle that you need to authenticate more? Um, another thing, Carrie, that I've definitely been guilty of in the past is as it relates to being authentic is sometimes we're hiding out and we sometimes don't even realize that we're hiding or we're still wearing a mask, so to speak, because we're so concerned about what the marketplace is going to think about if we choose to do something different. And when we're choosing to do something different and it's not received, then we start trying to tweak what we do to still fit a certain model, and that within itself is not really fully uh, being authentic. So it's really time to get real, get real with who you are, uh, why you're here to serve uh, the purpose, and what it is that you really want out of life and, and out of business. That is a mindset up level and a shift that really has to be embodied for sure. And I'm so glad that you, you brought that up and you were talking about that because it is, it's such an important component of, you know, marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think that when, you know, and even I look at people who are sales reps who, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, you can tell that they're holding something back with their mm -hmm. personality. And it could mm -hmm. be that they have more of a, I don't want to say an aggressive streak, but they're more mm -hmm. of a type A personality. But someone's told them to hold that back. Yeah. And I think, you know, it does it does hurt them in the long run because if you have more of a stronger personality, mm -hmm. you know, and you're holding it back and you bring someone on board that has a personality that's not going to mesh well with that, it's going to come to a head at some point. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens is it really can backfire in the long run because you wind up losing them as a client or firing mm -hmm. them uh, because it's not a good fit. And then you have someone who's not happy at that right. point. Right. Um, so definitely. Win -win. It's not. It's not. And and like I said, and I've learned that the hard way. I know you have too. And mm -hmm. I think it's such an important conversation to, you know, to have with people while they're, you know, listening to the show. And Alicia, you mm -hmm. shared just so much great content so far already. I, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, and this is a hard question, but I like to ask everybody this. If you could only offer one piece of advice 
about marketing and as it pertains to the mindset, what would it be and why? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to speak to this from a, a cross industries uh, vantage point uh, because it was a mindset shift that I had to make um, is not to put limits on yourself uh, as a marketer. Don't limit yourself to only serve in, in one arena. Uh, there are other industries who are missing out on what you have to offer. And the reason why I bring this up is because I see so many entrepreneurs put limits on themselves as it relates to their income and their impact. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go and serve in arenas that won't be a good fit for you. But what I am recommending is that you discover maybe a creative way to take what you already do and repurpose or sort of reframe it to possibly serve and add value to uh, those outside of your traditional uh, niche market. But regardless of whatever you do <laughs> um, or not, is this, you always have to be prepared to serve at the highest level and just be open to change and expansion. So I would definitely say uh, be limitless at this point um, and be open to change. And that's that's some very, very good advice. And I would just say, too, just with being open to change, you know, and I think so many people think this, too. They think mm -hmm. during that course of the plan, because things never turn out like we think they're going to, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to tweak it or you have to make some changes. Mm -hmm. It's not a failure. And I think no, a lot of people no. look at that with their marketing efforts that, oh, this must be a failure. But it's not. Sometimes it's just a matter of tweaking one little thing. Mm -hmm. And it could be the terminology you're using. It could be right. the way that the ad is laid out. Mm -hmm. It could be one tiny little thing, and that's what makes, you know, at that point, then, wow, you've got, you start seeing a huge shift in how mm -hmm. things are working out. So don't look at it as, you know, as a failure. And uh, definitely uh, just some great things that uh, you've shared today, and I'm just so glad that we were finally able to get you on <laughs> my show to talk about such a great topic and and it is just so so important and just kind of in closing alicia mm -hmm. anything else that you'd kind of like to share in closing on the topic oh sure i would definitely uh, like to send an encouragement uh for your listeners to fully show up and be who you are you know as a unique expression and as carrie and i have been sharing uh, in dialogue today you see different variations of our personalities that that come out and, and we use that in, in business as well, but we're fully being who we are and um, not ashamed of that. And I think it's really time that the mindset that has to be really up-leveled is for you to truly, as Carrie said, get real. If you want to abandon the term of being authentic, just be fully you. I show up as the total me empires. I, I bring all of it to the table, and I use it at, at different stages in various forms, and that's how I'm able to effectively uh, transform and reach different industries. And I believe that all of us are here to really serve at a higher level, but it starts with the renewance of your mind. You renew your mind first and be open to infinite possibilities of what can happen uh, for you at this stage in your entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for sharing that. And